are fighting the party of the rich. The party of the powerful. The party of big business. The party that controls the industries, the cartels and the press. These are our enemies. Well, working at uh, Jarrow Library, working with school children from Jarrow on the Jarrow Crusade, it's the 80th um, anniversary, and I think it's really important that uh, the children today know something of the times, something of what it meant to Jarrow at the time to walk to London and why. And it's important for them to know and to know people's memories and what they felt. And we're using a whole host of uh, ways to to do, the, to do the work, including the archive material. But what I'm concentrating on is to creative writing, having the children write what it would be like, for example, if your dad was leaving and going on the crusade and how you'd feel sad and excited at the same time. So it's important work about Jarrow. We're working with Jarrow Cross School and St Bede School uh, to look at uh, the 1911 census on the, on the computers to find out where the uh, Jarrow Crusaders lived in 1911 and to find out about their family backgrounds and see if they came from Jarrow and um, to look at how many people lived in the houses and how many rooms the houses had so you build up a picture of what it was like for them um, in the early parts of their life. I think um, for the children I, hopefully it helps them build up a picture of who the marchers were and um, what, what Jarrow was like and also uh, hopefully it helps them to learn how to do historical research and to start find, finding out about the past. Last week we had um, the kids in from the schools and uh, we sat down with the photos of the Jarrow Crusade. It's got a, a whole bunch of the photos from the time, the press photography. And we sat down and we looked at the kinds of things that appeared in the newspapers. We tried to decode what was going on. So if they were scrubbing potatoes and peeling potatoes for the food, um, if they are marching with a harmonica band, um, the ground sheets that they had across their shoulders that then became capes when it's raining, they used to um, put down on the floor if it was wet, uh, their caps, their badges, uh, the dog, all sorts of things that are going on in the march. They could, they could understand what the crusade was. They walked past the mural and the you know the sculptures and the and the plaques to the crusade and you know bits of the town are called are named after the march. And it really brought it to life for them. They understood what it was really about. Well, I actually had two uncles who um, took part in the Jarrow March. One of them was Edward Stead from Derby Street in Jarrow, and the other one was Sammy Needham. Um, he lived in Ferry Street at the time. The marchers were very, very... Um, well, they were impoverished. As you see, looking at um, Sammy Needham's picture there, the high cheekbones, he was emaciated and um, you can see how impoverished they were. Uh, they were doing it for a cause, but they were very, very brave in doing so, because I just don't know where they found the strength from, but they certainly did have the determination. Um, they didn't want anything free. They were prepared to work for it, you know, because we had industries here on the town, steel making, shipbuilding, and they wanted to be able to get on with that. So they weren't asking for anything free. They wanted employment, but paid employment to feed their families. 
Sammy was known as the, the man with the dog because Paddy the dog joined the march in Jaro. I suspect he thought he'd get better fed there than he would at home. Um, but the idea was that they would drop Paddy off somewhere five miles or so down the line and somebody would bring him home. But Paddy decided he wanted to stay. Now when they all got back to Jaro after the march, um, everybody owned Paddy. Well, I was told about the Jarrow March by my grandmother and my mother. It was my grandfather, Luke McCauley. He would have been uh, 33 years old when he went on the Jarrow March. He lived in 20 Camp Bryan Street, Jarrow. I mean, we're all very proud of it because they went on this march. They wanted a right to a decent job. And I'm very, very proud of them and the 200 men that went along with them on this march. When you look back on the 1936 Jarrow Crusade and your father was involved in the, in the making of the petition box and your uncle actually took part in the, in the crusade. We lived in um, Western Road. Western Road was a different place than what it is now. I don't know whether I'm accurate in describing it as one of Palmer's slums, but it was it was it was slum housing. My uncle Alf lived in I think it was 76 Western Road. They weren't going down with any any kind of begging ball, or going down to demonstrate the fact that they were well they were entitled to a, to a pay packet, and that was all they were marching for. They wanted to give themselves and their families dignity. They wanted to feed their kids. And I mean, times were desperate. Now, the box, as I say, he made the box with his two hands. The two holes for the carrying ropes on either side of the box. Nobody could go to B&Q for a pistol drill in those days. So he burnt them in with two red-hot pokers. I watched him do it. He took it, he had to take it out on the landing because my mother was playing hell about the stink, you know. He pinned two sheets of wallpaper up, the same size as the banners, uh, with the back the back shown, you know, the plain side shown. And he sketched out the letters Jarrow Crusade on them. And they were used as a template for the actual banners. The banners themselves were made out of pieces of linen. The letters were transferred to the, the banner. Uh, the letters were in blue material. I'm proud of them. I'm proud of all of them. I mean, let's face it, what they did was outstanding. Because what they did, they upheld the dignity of, uh, of, of working class people, if you like. As I marched down that road with those men, all of whom I knew well, who I had worked with in my own constituency, as I marched with them, hour after hour, just talking, that I began to understand something of what it meant. Day after day after day to get up and not know what you were going to do, never having a copper in your pocket. I think I'm right in saying that the attitude of the National Executive of the Labour Party towards the General March at the time wasn't favourable. And uh, she went to the, the 1936 um, conference, I think it was the 1936 conference in Edinburgh, to uh, plead for the, the case for the Jarrah Crusade and she got a rough reception from the platform. She actually left the platform in tears. All I know about Ellen Wilkinson is that she was a feisty little lady uh, known as Red Ellen and she um, joined the march and, and did part of the march. I don't think she went all of the way with, with uh, the petition but um, she was a feisty she, I think she was probably more feisty than Margaret Thatcher, actually. <laughs> they knew who Alan Wilkinson was, um, and they, you know, they thought she looked like a cheery character. Um, and we had a picture of her at Hyde Park, the, the demonstration at the end of the march, and pictures of her on the march itself, pictures of her um, playing a drum, pictures of her eating sandwiches with the marchers, and it showed how natural she was with, with her own constituents. This march has put Jarrow on the map. Do not think this is the end. It is only the beginning. 
the beginning of the fight for our right to work. This is a great night for Jarrow.